So we'll begin with just a quick reminder of where we are. We're actually now looking at the settings that are available to us under access points. So we'll be looking at access point grouping and some individual access point settings. Here we are then under configure access points and we can see the access points that have now joined the zone director. If you watch the registration module you saw me bring in two access points. I've added an extra couple now just to help with the demonstration. So the access points are in and functional. What we need to do now is to scroll down to a section we haven't really looked at yet and that is access point groups. We can see that there is a system default access point group. All access points that join the zone director will join the system default group. So we can see there are currently four members. Let's take a moment then to look at what is the system default group. The system default access point group will contain the settings that are applied to the access points as they join the controller. Let's have a look at what some of those settings are by clicking on the edit button. We can see that most of the settings are going to be related to the access point radios. At the top we see the channels that are available to use according to the country code that we've set. As we scroll further down we've got the radio settings. This is really the channel widths, the actual channels available, power settings. Then we've got some WLAN group settings and some other settings for fine tuning. We'll scroll a bit further down again and we can see IP, bonjour information, location services, Model specific control allows you to make additional configuration settings that will apply to access points of a specific model. Max clients allows us to set the maximum number of clients that we're going to allow to associate with each access point. Status LEDs allows us to disable the status lights. The port settings gives us some additional configurations that we can apply to the ports on the back of the access point, and that will depend on the ports available. Finally, members show the group members, and as this is the default access point group, all access points that have joined the controller are currently members of the group. It's easy to understand that when the access points register to the zone director, they're placed in the default access point group, and then the settings are applied to the access points. Most of these settings are configurable, but is it a good idea to configure the default access point group? Well, let's cancel this and look at our options. Personally, I think it's always a good idea to leave the system default groups as they are. Best thing to do then is to create a custom group. We begin then by creating a custom access point group and then defining the settings that we want the custom access point group to have. Next, we select which access points we want to move from the default group to the custom access point group and then we move them. Finally, the access points adopt the settings of the custom access point group. Note that the access points can be a member of only one group. When we move them to the custom group, they're no longer members of the default access point group. We create a custom group when we want to apply specific settings to a specific group of access points. So let's click on create new and go through these options again. I'm going to create a sample group here and I'm going to call it main office access points. You saw in the default group that we have the channels available. So what do we want to do with those channels? Do we want to override that channel selection? So that the access points within this group will only be able to use certain channels. We could do that. For example, we could go to the 2.4 gigahertz radio and remove all the channels that could potentially overlap, leaving us with 1, 6 and 11, for example. Now these access points will only have those channels available to use. Whether you do do this or not, of course, is another question because we do have channel fly and background scanning and the self-recovery mechanisms built into the access points. You do have this option. For best practices, I would say always leave the access points on the default settings here unless you have a very good reason to override the system default. When we get down to the radio settings, we've got the option of changing the settings on the 2.4 GHz radio or the 5 GHz radio or both. Channelization is the width of the channel available. The access points and the clients themselves will always look to use the highest data rate possible, so they will automatically choose the best channel width open to them. But you might have reasons for forcing a specific configuration. So we can go in 2.4 to 20 or 40 megahertz wide channels, and in 5 gigahertz, we can go to 20, 40, and 80 megahertz wide channels. Again, we're going to leave this on auto. Well, the channels themselves, do we want to override the system default? Uh, and if we override the system default, what channel are we going to force the access point to use or the access points in this group to use? We can do that. And the same for five gigahertz, we have the choice to do that for indoor and outdoor access points. The transmit power. This is something that's worth considering because 
the axis points will automatically adjust their transmit power, especially when they're using beam flex. Client devices that are close to the axis points will use less power because they're able to modulate at higher data rates. So the axis point power is automatically scaled up and down. I actually have these axis points that I'm using in the lab here in the same room as me. So I'm going to actually turn these down to minimum just because they're here with me. So it just reduces the power that I've got bouncing around the room. 802.11n and AC only mode means that we can put the access points into mode where they work with only a specific modulation type N and AC. So this will mean that the legacy A, B and G devices won't be able to connect. Again, I'm going to leave that off. The WLAN group option shows us that by default we are using the default WLAN group. We'll look at WLAN groups later on, but for now, just understand that every time we create a WLAN, by default, it will go into the default WLAN group, which means that all access points that are used in the default WLAN group will broadcast all of these WLANs. This may be something that you want to control, and it's covered in the WLAN module. Call admission control is an advanced quality of service feature. WMM compliant devices don't necessarily need to use call admission control, but it's an extra feature that you would use in specialist circumstances. The use of call admission control is outside the scope of this course, so we won't cover it anymore. Spectralink compatibility deals with the integration of Spectralink phones. The WLAN service is whether the access point will actually transmit any of the WLANs that have been created. It's a useful feature to turn off WLANs, especially in the early stages of configuration, because what you can do is you can go through all your configurations and all your setup, but not actually have any of the WLANs being broadcast until you're ready, in which case you would come in here to the WLAN service and override the system settings. Moving on, the default AP group will operate with a specific IP mode. We can go in here and override that. Bonjour fencing is something that's applied to a group of access points, and alongside with Bonjour gateway is something that we need to consider when we're looking at using Apple services. We'll cover that in a separate module too. Location services are to do with Hotspot 2.0 venues. Again, that's an advanced subject and it's outside the scope of this course. The model specific control allows us to apply specific configuration to specific access points of a model type that join this group. For example, if we scroll down, we can select an access point from the list. Well, you saw that I've got some R510, so if you click on the R510, these are the options that are available. We could say, for example, that the R510s in this group will override the default system setting of 100 clients maximum per access point. Some ruckus access points have a USB port that supports third-party USB devices that plug into the port and deliver things like Bluetooth beacons, for example. With this option, USB port, we can override the system default and disable the USB ports for access points in this group. We can disable the status LEDs. This is something that's done sometimes in hospitals because they don't want access point lights to disturb patients. Or maybe you want to turn off the status lights so that people can't see the access points if they're in an area where potentially they could be noticed and stolen perhaps. So let's override the system default and disable the LEDs on the access point. We just tick the boxes here. Finally, we have the port setting and here we can go in and change the behavior of the ports on the back of the access point. If we override the system default, we have access to the two ports at the back of the access point and we can decide what they're going to do. We can enable and disable. We need to make sure if we disable the port that we disable the correct one. By disabling the PoE in port, we could potentially lose contact with the access point. We can enable tunneling and DHCP option 82. We can change it from a trunk port to an access port or a general port. Change the VLAN ID. And over here we have the option for 802.1x configuration. All of these are quite advanced subjects and we will look at some of this in later modules. Finally, we have to add access points to the group. And we do that here by clicking on add more access points from the system default group to this group. When we click on that, we can see the access points that we have available. I'm going to select the two R510s and add them to this group. And then we can see the members here. If we want to move the access points back from this group, we can select them and move them to a different group later. So that's the settings that we have available in an access point group. So in this module, I've created a new access point group. I've done a couple of minor configurations for that group and I've added two access points to the group.